Hello everyone, I have here the LEGO Icons Medieval Town Square set. This has 3,304 pieces. I paid $230 US plus tax for it, and I built it live during a couple of charity streams over on Twitch. The set comes with eight minifigures, a handful of small, useful side builds, a medium-sized side build for a tree with a little bit of terrain, and then two main clumps of structures, multiple structures each. We're going to look at those closely first. Now, each of these large builds is fully detailed all the way around and fully enclosed by default. They can be opened up to get more access to the interior, not just from lifting uh, roofs up from the top, but as you can see, the level of detail is nice and consistent all the way around. So it doesn't really have a camera unfriendly angle, no matter how you want to display this, they have some options for you. Let me go ahead and start over here on the right side. So this is the the little house where they they have a little bit of farm around the outside, but also make cheese. And then this is a Woodwright's shop in the middle and over on the, or, or carpenter, and over on the left is the tapestry weaver. We're gonna start here. And most of the structures use thatched roofs throughout this. This one has some of the lesser detail of the different ones. They try to give you different colors and also different levels of, of texture between them. This one could have used a little bit more, but the dark tan is accented with suggestion of a little bit different straw in the medium nougat color there. The sign is done on both sides with stickers. There are some stickers in the set. They've got the white grating covering up the windows there, and this is a very nice door piece with the, the texture in it for for wooden paneling outside this this is actually a gate that you can open that's nice and convenient i think that the outside section has it doesn't use too many pieces but it feels it feels right it feels right sized for minifigures and everything got a nice little, little ledge out here there's actually a, a bee that's hovering around a flower here you find some more of those around the space this is the second uh, of the modern generation of goat. So as uh, I originally thought from the from the old leaked picture from a survey that this might actually be sand blue when it would come out, but it ended up being dark, uh, just a regular dark bluish gray. And also back here, we've got a squirrel that's trying to come up to a trough. The trough is just for water for the one goat. And honestly, the yard space here is large enough that they could have included one more animal, I think, either a duplicate of the goat or the white version of the goat, or even a cow would fit in here. So if you have a cow, it'll fit in this space and not look too cramped. And a cow would really make sense because cheese is being made inside this structure. But again, I do like the level of detail around the outside, and I do appreciate that not everything is super, super cramped together. And I like the, you know, just a little, little change of, of pace here, the dark green color. Uh, the half door right there opens up, you know, to get minifig access. You can also imagine the, the goat being led in through there. And then this side also has the chimney. Uh, most of the chimneys are done fairly similar through, throughout this, just a little bit different, uh, slightly, slightly different use of the light gray versus the dark gray. And all of this can be removed to get you more access to the inside. But that's not the only thing. You can already see something else is happening here. So I can take all this off very, very strong build here probably stronger than it ever needed to be but that's not a bad thing it definitely doesn't hurt it at all but you can also take all of this and open it this way to get you even more access so your hands can get in here and from the top and a little bit from the front and the back here's what it looks like with a little extra light from up above to make sure you can see in there clearly so a brick built chair off to one side with nice uh, colors to it at least the cat is trying to get at a bucket of milk which makes sense we got the stove back there for warming stuff up and various different types of cheeses that have either been made or are in the process of being worked on here's an attempt to get a look at it from the top with the stone slab flooring with some cracks and imperfections in it and you know you've got your your whole workbench there a little bit of extra storage space is used up in a small bit of attic off to the side and there is the stove with the two different colors in it resetting everything we'll focus in on the center structure which once again is a carpenters or woodwrights shop which has just a little bit 
of a small yard in the back, which has some more foliage and some little, little fungus growing up there, a barrel in the back, and there are some tools inside underneath the awning and fully inside. We'll, we'll take a look at all of that stuff soon. Once again, a thatched roof with not as much thatching on it as you might want to see. I think they could put just a little bit more on there. Might've been a little bit limited with the, the budget there. Small perching bird on this crane here that's lifting up a wheel. So you, you've got the second story access. You could have somebody up there who's going to be you know, grabbing at this with a hook, or maybe they're sending it down for more active use. Once again, the sign is done with a sticker and this one has a, <laughs> sorry about this part right here, has a, a, a nice key, old style of key that fits into the door, you know, the classic style of door. Now we need to look inside. Once again, cobble for the front with everything fully hinged out. You know, you kind of get a little bit of a, a different shape of space over here, which is nice, but you can't really turn it to the side immediately. This looks like it's it's cut open. So you, know, you need to, at the very least, compromise by having just one of these things hinged open if you want to get a little bit of, of a different shape that's just for display from one particular angle. But for right now, I'm going to open up both of those just so that you can see inside of this space, both downstairs and up. You can also remove this whole roof as one thing once again this side honestly isn't that good to be looking in a couple things up on the wall there with the uh, the bow and a small wooden shield and then this is a freshly built chair wooden chair around the other side you can definitely see better but it's still not that great it's still a little bit cramped for easier access for us humans to get our hands in there you can take the upper level off but instead i'm just going to take these individual side little small builds out so you can see them these are all placed on jumpers, so it's easy to remove them. This is a hand cranked lathe, so you spin this up and you can imagine that this is the stock of wood that's being turned right now. Maybe turned into a, a table leg or something like that, like the ones for this table right here, which has the stool over here. You can pull this out so it can be just half and half. And there is a, uh, a little, little description of the exact measurements for the chair. And this is the chair once again all freshly hewn, just recently made. Small, but you know, looks like it's custom. And then just a tool rack over here and a little bit of extra storage on the side. Now, there are a number of these letters throughout and they are not printed, they're stickers, but each one has a different symbol on that. And some of those have some meaning that kind of go with the story that you can figure out or make for yourself throughout this and connecting a little bit to the Lion Knight's castle as well. Up above on the second floor and normally hidden away by this part of building here, you may have noticed some things sticking out. These are controls. Uh, two of them are controls for the crane out there. One of them is a ratcheting release. So you're supposed to turn this and it lets it go. There's not enough weight on there right now, but it would just pull it down and then you can lock it. So it's not going to go any further than that. And then this is just to wind it up for lifting things. And the third one is a control for kind of a trapdoor sort of mechanism for a drop down uh, ladder for access. Here's what all that looks like on the inside. So you wind up over here. You've got the ratcheting mechanism, which you can control right there and it will let it go. Again, if you've got enough weight on there, it will pull itself down. And then this is the catch for the, you see how the ladder is folded up on a little trap door and it just falls straight down. This is really nice, really nice packaging for getting access. You know, it doesn't get in the way. It's not a permanent installation, it doesn't get in the way. It makes sense, I think, in universe. Get that out the way, there we go. And yeah, it goes all the way down and the spacing even between the rungs is, is pretty decent here. So I can totally imagine somebody really using this to get access to that upper floor in a small space. Also upstairs, the other wheel, whether you're putting it up there or you're taking it down, some spare wood stock, and then this is an axle that will work with those wheels together. Resetting once again, this is where the tapestry maker lives. You got a brick built door for this one with the nice dark green color, and this is nice and smooth. Once again, a cobble here out front, a little bit of dark red in there. This one has full thatching. So this is the most nicely done roof here in this set, I think, because not only do you have the full coverage with all of that nice texture with the dark brown color, but also around this window slash ventilation <laughs> little, little spot up here, it's nicely shaped in different ways. And it stays pretty, pretty close to, to the shaping. It almost feels like it's just drooped around there. You can see a little bit of brown through there, which is a little bit of an off color, but 
you know, relative to the rest, but the shaping is very, very nice. Around the side, some some more agriculture. We've got just a bucket of water for, for watering things and possibly feeding things, but a, uh, a pumpkin is being grown there. Here's another one of those bees around the beehive. That's why we've got so many bees around here. Growing some root crops with the carrots and the parsnips there. Some are in, some have already been picked out. And another bee over here who's doing some pollination of a flower, more flowers going around the back, and another one of these chimneys. And this one's just a little bit thinner, a little bit more consistent, maybe cleaner. Inside there's a loom, and I'm gonna pull that out so you can see the detail, and also try to see what's what else is inside of here, which is a little bit difficult compared to some of the other spots. You can see all the yarn up there. This is probably the shuttle over here on, on the side, but the roof of this one does not open up. The back does, does not open up, and it only hinges to 90 degrees right here. That's that's your limit. So, you know, you can get your hands in over there. You can you can get your hands around here, but seeing it is not that great. There's just a there's just a stove over there. That's that's all. You know, I think that actually works out because if there was a whole bunch of detail over on that side, it would have been a little bit difficult and annoying to get to it. So, I'm I'm okay with this. And again, the loom itself, this uses a sticker. The, they're creating this this tapestry here. You can move the batten up and down, which is really nice. And yeah, you can you can check out the scenes that are being depicted there, uh, inspired by some very, very old Lego uh, classic castle, which totally makes sense here in the color scheme with the limited number of colors in total. You know, the classic colors make sense. Also, the brick built horses like this is this is well done. And I think the the build of the loom itself is nice. I, f I forget the, the name of, of this thing here that, that holds it, holds it out or pushes it out. Um, but uh, yeah, I've, I've never done this kind of work myself, but all these things can can move and be posed a little bit different. And yeah, it just adds to the authenticity of it, it makes it feel a little bit more uh, immersive to me. And again, this is what it looks like if it's fully opened up around the back. So they do give you those options. You can get this look here, you can get this look here, but you're gonna, you're gonna be limited in the angles that are, like I said, camera friendly. This clump of structure is not as wide or as deep as the other one, but it's taller all the way around. This one has the tavern, which takes up this entire side here. There's a small corner uh, defensive emplacement, the watchtower there. And then this portion of structure includes a, a dwelling as well as a workshop down below. We're gonna start with the tavern and look at the details starting from this corner and then work our way around and up. There's something about this, this whole ground floor here with its colors and its shaping and the, the relative positions and proportions of the windows and everything that feels oddly familiar to me and it shouldn't, but I don't know, was it, was it old Baldur's Gate or Ultima or something? Some old games or maybe even described in some, some text stuff that just, it just says this, this was this place. This is, this is where you were. So that's a good thing. They've definitely captured something from, from fantasy. It might not be the most realistic thing, I think, architecturally with the extra overhang here. Uh, maybe, man, I don't know if the details are historically accurate, but I like it. It looks like what I would want it to look like, and that's a good feeling. Um, and, it, and it feels believable enough within a, a Lego world context. Once again, you've got cobble here, but then uh, it's stepping up farther than the other structures did. It's a couple torches outside. Uh, oh, the, the door is dark brown and locked from the inside in this case, the keys from the other side. A little bit of 3D, 3D signage out here to capture your attention. Some sills that can be used with the pie sitting on one of them. Additional signage here for you know good, good eats here with a little bit of wrought iron style detailing up above that does use a sticker on either side. And then thatched roofing. Again, this one using plenty of the thatch, plenty of that texture, which is exactly what I want to see. Unfortunately, uh, you can lift this up, but once you start getting into it, you're not going to lift the next section up or the section down below. So this one doesn't come apart uh, the way that the, the other, well, basically the way that you expect for Lego things in general. And that means that when you open it up, this is the only access that you get. Now it's not bad. It's not bad access at all because it's not too deep. So it's not too difficult to get your fingers in there and have minifigures standing around. And thankfully you can have them stand around even on this uh, tiled floor because they did put in 
some uh, some studs and you know they're distributed about in a, in a nice way let's get just a little bit more light just a little bit more light got the keg over here and has just the one little print at the the end of it your metal mugs used in there a loot is on the the bench back here and that's a chessboard i'm assuming it's a chessboard right a couple of huge chess pieces there there's only so much you can do at lego scale but i think this is a, an effective use of of space it, again there's not a whole lot of space here, but I think it's used properly. And having this empty area here allows you to put some figures in there. And it's not completely, completely cramped. The next level up, uh, well, you can do some you can do some cooking over here, obviously. We've got a, a whole lot of food-related stuff you can be eating here, but I'm assuming that this is the the kitchen for the uh, for the tavern. So all kinds of different food can be made here, which is great. I mean, they've, they've even got crab. This is fancy. This place is really, really fancy. Again, appropriate level of detail here and enough room for figures to be able to move around. I really love that you can actually open the door to the, it's a little bit difficult to, to get to for my, my big, sorry about this, but my big human hands, but you can open the door and you can imagine putting some some wood in there to, to stoke the, the flames. And this is connected to the chimney system that goes out over here and then up top, is just just one single room that you can you can reserve so you got the bed over there some additional cheese upstairs i don't know if somebody's holding on to that or if maybe a rodent has put that there a, a sword has been put up also using that storage space little little corner uh, bracketing to uh, to good effect again and a another letter like I said, stickers are used for these, but it's because each one has a different design. Resetting again, putting this back together. The little watchtower corner has a set of stairs leading up the side here, which is not really usable. It's only two studs wide and you know, one arm of a figure can overhang the edge, but the other arm doesn't have a place to go. So you can't just have somebody who's, who's walking up the stairs. They have to be at the landing. This is very, very cramped this space here. There's a, there's a little suggestion of a ladder back there. You can kind of see it. Yeah, right there. You can see it right there. And that's for getting to this, this upper level. You're not going to get to the topmost level, but I think it would be unreasonable to ask for, for, you know, a proper ladder or stairway or something to get all the way up here because it's just so small. But the detailing out here is nice. The arrow slit is perfect. It's very, very thin as it should be. And definitely you can pose a figure or two up here to just be on guard. There are also crenellations and the suggestion of machulations, machulations, right? Or, or something like that. It might be kind of the, uh, just the decorative form of it. I, I, apologies if I'm forgetting the term, but I know we've got plenty of, of uh, castle and medieval historians out there who, who know exactly what these things are. And Lego is trying to check the boxes for the folks who need absolute historical accuracy for everything, even though, you know, this is a toy that's definitely taking a lot of creative li liberties as it has every right to do to fit into the space. I like the creative liberties that were taken with the parts. This actually uses quite a lot of pieces for this little tree that's growing in this corner. Again, adding just different texture, you know, different texture and colors. You can imagine walking up here and trying to get some of these, imagine these being cherries or, or plums at least that you can pick and use for pie. And there's a little bird back there, a little bird that's that's perching in, well, it's, it's just uh, nesting in its nest that's made from a single dark orange colored beard piece, a little uh, small tree here and a little bit of vines around the side. The chimney here has a little kink in it, goes off to the side, so it's not just straight up. Also loud enough space for another window right here. You got the thatching. See, all of the all of these details I think are nice. And, and I think that a whole lot of extra work went into the design of this that, that shows to make sure that it looks interesting and different all around and doesn't start to look boring and doesn't start to look formulaic. The, the most boring part is really just this corner here. Just the, the resolution of this is not that great. That's, that's like the worst section of it. Again, slightly different treatment for the uh, for the chimney here, but but similar and plenty of thatching going all the way through this time using the regular tan. And now let's open this up. Once again, I'm going to start from the ground level. 
This is the Shield Makers Workshop. So they've got a blank over here that's not been painted up. They've got the stove work in there. And I mean, they really do a whole lot of painting in this space. You can see the, the paint drops around. You see the blocks of pigment. Another nice, uh, that's just a sticker up on the wall, but you know, reference to other things we've gotten from the castle theme in, in the past. Anvil, so they are actually making things here, or at least adjusting them. But there's a whole lot of decoration that goes on. Again, you've got a, bl a, a blank here, or you know, just an undecorated one. It's, it, to me, it's a blank because <laughs> They're, they're canvases. There's a, a brush against the wall over there. It's a green one and it's dripping green paint just like this one is dripping green paint down to the ground. There's also a blue one in this set that you will see. And I really like the, the blocks of pigment that are suggested there. And then the, the white medium, I'm guessing. So yeah, you know, and you've got the hammer back there for, for adjusting and shaping. And also for this shop, you've got this display that can be put out. So a finished white backed shield here and then an unfinished one off to the side so this is just something to again add a little bit more texture and detail at different spaces you, you can place this out front or somewhere else or just store it inside if you want the next level up is i'm assuming the residence of a decently high high ranking maybe lieutenant level uh, Lion Knight, I mean, this is a, this is a pretty nice space and they, they got their colors there and everything. But there's something peculiar about this with the, once again, with the, the letter here. And this is a, a very fancy, nice looking place. It's got another sword up on the wall there. The bed is built almost the same as the last one that you saw. But the door to this space is super narrow. It's only two studs wide. However, it does work and you can fit a minifigure in there sideways as long as their hands are down down by their sides. So, you know, that that works well enough for me. It's it's good enough and it's good use of the space without making this super flimsy. So I appreciate that. And one other thing that didn't see here is that inside there's a there's a bat hanging from that level. Uh, can I get it to focus there? There you can see it right there. It's upside down. The set's larger side build is just a little bit of terrain which has grass and water on it both. You get the iconic frog, which they have to put in almost every set these days, anytime that they can. This one's in lime green, and this also has some, uh, some stickers that are applied around the outside that show you some small signs. And each of those is different. This, this whole tree to me looks like it was cut uh, many, many years ago, like maybe uh, 10 years ago, it feels like it was, it was cut. And then the, the side branches continued to grow just as they were. And then one center section was able to, to become viable out of it. They went vertical again and became the new trunk. It's just a really interesting shape and it works for me. I'm, I'm especially appreciative of the fact that they put a lot of the leaf elements in this, you know, so it, it's not looking too sparse. It looks a little bit weird with the with the two tiers there, but it's a lot better than a lot of the trees that they've done in the past. And I think overall that this is useful and can be placed in different places, not just with this set, but in within the theme and use kind of to help connect different things together that are not necessarily directly connected with Lego pieces. Looking at the other side builds, this is a nice carriage intended, I believe, to be pulled by just a human being here. It doesn't need an animal. And this one is, you know, has a good use of space. And you see it's probably made by the carpenter in this set. It has some, some familiar elements here. And it looks like it was probably made fairly recently with some of the lighter colored timbers there. This has some stuff in it. Uh, some form of ginger ale, I'm, I'm assuming. Doesn't look like root beer here, but I don't know what else it could be. I'm, I'm, I am assuming that it is being delivered to the tavern. You've got a cheese stand here because, hey, they've got a, a shop that's making cheese, so they've got to have some place that's publicly open. But of course, you could just walk into the, to the shop, but this is maybe... I don't know, a, a satellite store of, of theirs with plenty of different colors and shapes there. Also some, some bread to go with it. This is a good use of its space and also add some more color into some scenes. And then finally, there's just a little sawhorse with a, uh, with a log on there that you can cut off as well as a long ax to go with it. 
Looking at some minifigures. First here is the carpenter. This kid is just a random peasant, but I think he runs the cheese stand. And this is the dude that does the, the tapestry, artistry, hence the shears or scissors in the hand. And I think that each of these looks very good. I like the variety, I like the colors, and I'm just generally happy with them. This the hairpiece right here, my gosh, really, really shows in this color how intricate it is. It is crazy intricate. Underneath here, you are gonna see some alter alternate uh, faces, not all of them throughout this series. Here from left to right is a very fabulous looking tax collector. Uh, it's, it's unfortunate that he looks so good because nobody likes the job that he does. Very unlovable character, but maybe not in Lego form. Uh, he's got his ledger there, and in the center is the shield craftsman uh, with some, some painting gear, as well as the blue-colored dual-molded uh, brush piece there. And on the right is supposedly a lion knight though that is somewhat questionable. I mean, that mustache does look very suspect. It looks like a disguise, doesn't it? And for folks who know, I know too. I just don't want to spoil everything for everyone all the time. So two of these have alternate faces and there's a better look at the, well, a look at all at the nice print on the back of this torso as well. I mean, all of them have it, but this one's, you know, a little, a little extra special. And then finally here on the left is the innkeeper and on the right is a member of the wolf pack. And I was not into Lego and certainly not into medieval stuff. Uh, when those first came about, I don't have the great uh, nostalgia or interest in that character that many people do, but that's okay. Different, different strokes for different folks. And I'm glad that for the folks who would be excited about such a character, they've included at least one. Hopefully they'll be doing more. At the very least, hopefully that torso will become readily available. And speaking of which, here's what it looks like around the back, more metallic printing. I always like to see that. And finally, the number of leftover pieces is pretty wild. Speaking of leftover pieces, there's an interesting thing that happened throughout the build. They had to go back a number of steps or even to a previous bag to dip into your leftover parts for daggers, more daggers, and also the keys. They only give you one sprue, one pair of the key. And one of them's used in one bag, the other's used in a completely different part of the build. Just a, I think it's the first time that I can remember in modern history, at least, that Lego has done that. It was, it was odd. So just make sure you're not the type of person who files away leftover pieces after every bag. I don't know how many people do that, but you, you would definitely have to take an extra trip to the parts bin if you did so with this. This is what the sticker sheet looked like. Everything was rectangular, so easy to apply. All right, we got to talk about value. Once again, this was $230 US plus tax and shipping and stuff. It's 230 euros, uh, 200 pounds UK or $300 Canadian plus tax for 3,304 pieces. If all you care about is price to part ratio, you absolutely love this set. As you know, I care about more than just that. And this set, as you saw from the spares, had a, a ton of tiny pieces, a ton of tiny pieces, different types of tiny pieces throughout it. Each build is dense, which is really good. So you can't just judge these uh, you know, kind of surface level just from the exterior. You have to have been through the build or at the very least open them up and really look inside, I think, to feel the value that is here. And do I think that uh, hardcore medieval Lego fans will happily pay $230 US plus tax for this. Yes, I think I think many will and many already have. Do I think they should have to pay that much? Not quite. I personally can't see myself being genuinely happy with the value. Splitting it into two because that's pretty easy to do. You know, this is one build, really. This is one build, really. Or combination together and then also splitting the the extra the minifigs and the extras down the middle as well i can't be comfortable saying more than a hundred dollars is is good for each so i'm at 200 tops that's already pushing it kind of would have liked to see for 100 each of these halves 200 top 200 for all of it together i would have liked to see more prints more or and or more minifigures 
that's that's I think it. The builds as they are, I think, can stay. Um, but yeah, more unique prints and or many more figures, like not just one. Give me like at least three more per side. Yes, I really, I really feel that. I would like that many more to help start populating out a, a, a village or useful side builds. Stuff like this. I think this one's very good. So that's where I'm at with it. Overpriced, yes, but it's a it's a very good build. I love how this one opens up. This is so practical. Even though not all the roof sections can be lifted up and everything, they do give you enough access there. I, I think it's it's very reasonable. The way this one opens up is weird. <laughs> yes, you can get into the lower level of this, but with the archway there, it's not good access for our big human hands. And this is an adult focused set, so I'm not going to say, well, you know, if I had age appropriate hands now, I, I do. Yeah, access down there. Not that great. And the way that these open up is is nice to start with. But the fact that one of them goes to 90 degrees, the other one goes to 90 degrees. And then you have this thing fully open. I guess you could see it as an open air workshop that would kind of work, but really needs really needs more to be camera friendly or viewer friendly, honestly, uh, as a display piece from more than one angle if it's if it's open. So that's that's a little bit of a miss. One of the nicest things about this for collectors, for folks who are into this sort of theme with Lego right now, is that this set uh, scales really, really well with the Lion Knight's Castle. Unlike Blacksmith Shop, remember Blacksmith Shop came out first. It had its own scale. When the Lion Knight's Castle came out, it made the blacksmith shop look overscaled. Well, it's because it was by comparison. These are smaller. Everything is much more compact and just is much more friendly with that look. So if you're kind of standardizing around the Lion Knight's Castle being your, your main centerpiece, this works with those. I think these, this also works with the three in one uh, creator castle. Uh, which a lot of people would buy multiples of and combine together. And that, if I recall correctly, that one was a hundred dollars, right? And I, if, if I recall correctly, also, I felt like that was overpriced at the time. Was it like this much stuff? Maybe, maybe not quite, huh? Maybe not quite. All right. Maybe on par with that. If you thought that that was a good deal, then I think you'll be okay with this. But overall, I, it was a it was a real joy to put this together, for sure, through and through. Could have used a little bit more thatching on some of the roofs. I'm really happy with the roofs that did get the full thatching, but I understand there were probably a little bit of, of uh, budget concerns in there, but mostly just the desire for different different textures. You know, not wanting everything to look the same. Just one more fully thatched roof, or like half, or something like that. But all in all, great variety, smart design choices for the most part, nice colors, feels realistic enough to me as someone who's not a medieval European architecture scholar or anything close. It feels more realistic than than most and grounded than most classic Lego castle stuff that people fawn over all the time, you know, with so much nostalgia. And yet still feels like it kind of fits into that that same world. So a nice balance, I think, has been has been preserved here. All in all, good stuff. Wish the price was down. But I hope that you've enjoyed this and I hope that my thoughts and views of it have provided something of value to you. So thank you for watching. I will keep working as hard as I can to bring you good content and I will talk to you again soon. Bye for now.